Hi everyone, I'm Marissa Sarbach. Welcome to The Buzz, Newsday's weekly series covering the hottest trends in music, movies, television, and so much more. Joining us today is one of the stars of the brand new Netflix series, Bling Empire. The reality series follows the lives of LA's wealthiest Asians and Asian Americans. Kelly Meely, thank you so much for joining us on the show today and coming on Pacific Coast Time. Thank you so much. Hi, Marissa. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We are so excited to have you on. And of course, this is the question when we're ever talking about a reality series that everybody always wants to know. Is it really unscripted what we're watching? <laughs> you know, it's funny because we were like, that, that can't be real. It is <laughs> very much real. Uh, we do do all these things that we are, it shows on camera with or without camera on. And Bling Empire is being compared to Crazy Rich Asians, which is a movie that we saw come out in 2018. It did so well in the box office. Do you feel like Bling Empire is the real story of the real Crazy Rich Asians? Uh, it really is. Um, I think, you know, we are inspired by Crazy Rich Asians, but um, these are all, all my friends. I've known them for a very long time, and it is our true life. What is it like to have cameras following you around and to, to see your life play out on screen like this? It is definitely a little difficult. It's been a learning process, um, but it's also had a lot of, um, we also had a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, it's hard sometimes to open up your life and your problems, that's the most thing, to, the, to, to everybody, to the world. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm really happy we did it and that every, you know, I hope people will like it. I think they absolutely will. And if they haven't had a chance to see it yet, I do want to air a clip from the show. We'll take that right now. It's only 19000 a month. This one or the black one? It's perfect for hiking. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. No, you're with us. You're so I'm still going through the process where I'm learning who I can and cannot trust. If you cross her line, she's going to cut you, bitch. How come Christine's not sitting here? <laughs> you know, people use money to test people. Oh, my God. This feels so good. <gasps> you're way overreacting right now. Are you more diamonds than her? Treasure. Well, Asian, we don't fight. I feel like crazy attracts crazy. <laughs> drama, drama, drama is all I see right there, Kelly. Is it like that? <laughs> Definitely not short as a drama. <laughs> How was it to see that, to see the trailer and to see it play out on screen? It must be such an interesting dynamic, even behind the scenes. Do you feel like we really get that on camera from everybody? Uh, you know what? It's funny because sometimes I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's not me. Is that me really <laughs> on television or is that really me? So it's been a, it's been very un unreal, uh, surreal. And uh, yeah, I, I think everybody's, everybody really enjoyed the process. Has somebody been more dramatic throughout the show? Anybody who's really the villain right now? I don't think that there's really one villain on our show just because again, our group of friends, it's been, we all been, we all have known each other for a long time. We hang out regardlessly um, with or without a show. So, you know, of course, somebody might make a mistake or say something in one episode, but we always make up. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, we, we all have been friends for a long time, so we're gonna keep being friends. And I know, yeah. I know your story is a little bit different from some of the other people on the show because your family, you didn't come from family money like a lot of the characters in the movie. Can you talk to us about, really, from the movie and the show, can you talk to us about your background as an entrepreneur and investor and how you got to this point in your career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my mom gave up a lot just to move to the U.S. when I was the age of 10. Um, and, you know, she worked three jobs just to support us. And from growing up in Chicago, it was, I went to some, you know, a little bit of rough schools as well as, uh, you know, later on, we ended up moving to a better uh, better neighborhood. But and my mom just uh, was able to give me a lot of opportunities. I've always been, you know, an entrepreneur. I've always been very independent. Um, I just end up, uh, I think I started my first business at the age of 23 and it just kind of worked away from there. But of course, I experienced a lot of ups and downs uh, like every entrepreneur. But in the, the day, it's just got to keep getting up and uh, keep moving forward. And I know you work as a film and television producer as well. So what's it like for you to now be in front of the camera? Was that a difficult transition? <laughs> it definitely was, you know, and um, it was funny because when we first started sh shooting the show, I'm like kind of cleaning everything. I'm like just, just moving. They're like, I your talent you don't have to do all this stuff um so it was definitely a, a fun it's a fun experience uh, to be in front of camera and i'm still getting used to it because again i'm, I'm normally I'm, I'm so behind the scene i'm normally the one that's like you know i'm on set no makeup and i'm in my you know <laughs> workout clothes and ready to get to work um and i'm used to also spending you know from morning to really late at night on set 
where with cast, you know, it's a little bit different where we have to, you know, we get there, um, but we film our scene and we can, we're able to leave. And I know you guys were able to wrap up filming before the pandemic, which is amazing that you were able to get that in and done. What was it like to be on set with everybody just as your friends, you know, hanging out, but realizing that there's a camera watching over your shoulder the whole time? The good thing is that sometimes we kind of forget the camera was there. Uh, <laughs> they were, the camera crew were so great. They were kind of discreet about everything. They kind of just let us kind of do our own thing. So that was a great thing. A lot of time I'm like, oh, I forgot I'm still mic'd. <laughs> <laughs> What is it like to have representation on screen for the Asian American community and the Asian community? How important do you think that is? It is so important to have uh, Asian representation on television. You know, just because growing up, especially in the U.S., I just didn't see anybody who looks like me on television. A lot of time, you know, uh, I remember there was like a, a time at a young age, they were like, which, like a group of uh, friends, they were, I think it was like probably 12 at a time, it was like, what's let's let's play a game what celebrities do you look like and i'm like uh i have lucy lou to pick from i don't really <laughs> have anybody else to pick from i mean lucy lou is great i love her but at the same time i want to have a little bit more variety so um you know asian is one of the most underrepresented uh culture or group in in uh, mass media so i'm just we're really hoping this show will add to it you know with the fresh off the bow and quizish asian doing so successful uh this so success so successful uh, that we hope that this one will be the next one. Yeah, and hopefully little girls like what you were originally watching on television can say, Kelly looks like me, you know, and, and it does matter. It makes a difference. Absolutely. What do you think the reaction's been from the Chinese community back, I know you're from a small town in China, or really even from your family. It's more of a low profile culture, if I'm correct, and here the show is very ostentatious. Absolutely. You know, growing up, the Asian culture is that, you know, you don't really talk a lot about your struggles. Everything, the surface has to be perfect. Um, you don't air out your dirty laundries. But at the same time, you know, for us, if we don't share, if we're not vulnerable, we can't change the future. We can't inspire the future generation. Um, one of the such a funny thing was that, you know, up to the age of, till I'm 30, really, that I didn't realize it's okay to cry because it's always been taught crying is a weakness in private as well as in public it's embarrassment it's it's a uh, it's it's uh it's weakness it makes you look bad so you know up till the age i was 30 it's such an easy concept but i was like wait it's okay to cry because that's a human emotion it's okay to share human emotions um i think uh you know the show is better everybody who's who's on the show is very vulnerable um so i think that's uh that's a great thing and hopefully that can uh inspire other you know, other Asians who watch a show to be a little bit more vulnerable, to be, to speak out their feelings. Cause again, we're, we're human. We feel these things. Let's not suppress it. Let's speak out. Let's seek help if we need to. Such a great point. Such a great takeaway. Hoping that everybody does get that when they watch on Netflix. Kelly Me Lee, star of Bling Empire out now on Netflix. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Marissa. For more on Kelly Me Lee and other buzz guests, head on over to newsday.com slash the buzz. Be sure to check out Kelly's new show, Bling Empire, available right now on Netflix. Thank you so much for joining us today on Newsday's The Buzz. Till next time, I'm Marissa Sarbak.